For this trip with the family, we decided to head to Mammoth Lakes for the weekend. It's definitely an experience as it's a long drive to get there, but it's amazing once you're there. During our time there, we did a couple hikes, explored the village, and ate at a few of our favorite restaurants. This is the third in our series of videos traveling with the toddlers, the first being Coronado and then Big Bear. You can see all of them in the description. Let us know what spots you want to see next and let's jump into our full weekend in Mammoth Lakes. The weekend in Mammoth Lakes began with a five hour drive north. We timed it with a baby's nap and spent the first two and a half to three hours driving before making our first stop. If you're not driving with young children, I have a ton of content on all my favorite things to do on Highway 395 on the channel. You could easily spend an entire day driving to Mammoth Lakes and stopping at a lot of my favorite spots. For us though, we went as fast as we could, went through Lone Pine and made our first stop outside of Independence. We were gonna stop in the Alabama Hills but decided to go to the Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery because everyone was asleep. The Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery is an awesome place to explore as it was built in 1916 and it's a historic structure. Over the years it has been responsible for really helping the golden trout population to thrive in the area. The property is open to visitors throughout the day and you can walk around the lake and just relax. Some days the museum is open as well but it wasn't open when we went. This is a fantastic area for families. There's a nice trail, you can pay a quarter to get fish food. Just a cool place to explore. Getting some food to feed the fish. Oh. Be sure to have some actual quarters when you come here. Feeding the fish is a total blast, especially if you have children. Saying goodbye to the fish hatchery and we're heading to Bishop to get coffee. From Independence, it's only about an hour and 20 minutes to Mammoth Lakes, so you've done most of the drive if you get this far. Amy and I love Looney Bean coffee though, so we stop every time we go through the area. We're getting coffee and they're drinking liquid salmon. That's what it's called. It's pureed protein. <laughs> liquid salmon. Liquid salmon, so gross. <laughs> Dirty hippie. <laughs> we also got a steamed vanilla milk for everyone. Is that good? Oh. We tried to be fun parents and buy our children steamed milk. Sunny dumped all of it on me, so now we're on our way to Mammoth. <laughs> on the way out of Bishop, I highly recommend stopping at Mahogany Smoked Meats. This place has been here for over a hundred years and makes some incredible beef jerky. It's a little bit pricey, but it's high quality and it's great for hiking. From there was another 45 minute drive to Mammoth Lakes into the house we were staying at with some family. We made it to Mammoth, that's the end of the first day on our trip. Not much else to do because the babies are going to bed, but we will see you tomorrow. We started our first day in Mammoth driving up past the Lake George campground to the trailhead for Crystal Lake. This is easily one of the most popular trails in the entire area, so get there early if you go on a weekend. That's a big ant. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, big ant. We're gonna go hiking, high five. Yeah, high five, Sonny. Our first morning in Mammoth, and we are heading out to Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake is one and a quarter miles from here. Are you excited to get to the lake and we're gonna throw some rocks in? Rock. Rock, okay. <laughs> Sonny, are you excited about hiking? <laughs> yeah. While the hike to Crystal Lake is not too difficult, it does gain a decent amount of elevation and many people are unprepared for how high you are when you start the hike. Just be sure to take your time, especially if you came from sea level. Whenever you're hiking with toddlers, you gotta find something to entertain them, so touching trees is a good option. So is counting rocks. <laughs> Continuing to head uphill, pretty soon we're gonna get some amazing views of the lake down below. As you start to gain elevation, Lake George will begin to peek through the trees. So that rock right there, the lake we're going to is right at the base of that. As the trail continues up, there's a decent amount of shade, which is nice for those hot summer days.
We're about halfway and we're getting some amazing views down towards the lake. They get even better when we go up there though. It's actually a decent amount of snow on this trail for late in June. It was pretty cool to see the snow on the trail in the shade and then to come out into the sun and see the amazing lake views. High five, buddy. All right, almost to the lake. Jackie's now slapping me in the head. That's not a fun way to hike. <laughs> if you do this hike in June, don't be like us and bring hiking poles for the snow. It'll get a little slippery on the way down. We reached the top of the final hill and now it's all downhill for the last tenth of a mile to the lake. I will say with the snow, this is a pretty challenging trail. So if you're coming with your family uh, early in the season, bring hiking poles. Note that it's a little bit challenging with the snow on the ground. We have made it to the lake. Eventually we made it to Crystal Lake and were greeted by some stunning views and some cold wind. The water was even so clear that Jack walked right into it and got his shoes wet, which wasn't ideal for the hike either. This lake and these views are incredible. We spent about an hour hanging out by the lake and I could have honestly spent all day. It's hilarious how much different hiking is when you have toddlers as everything is much slower paced and there's lots of time for throwing things into water. Amy and I just want to give the children the opportunity to enjoy the outdoors as much as we do, so we always plan for lots of time when we get to a destination to just explore and hang out. Eventually though, we packed up all our stuff and started the hike back down. I'm losing my hiking partner. She's falling asleep on the trail. <laughs> nice rocking motion makes it easy. <laughs> Family went back to the house to relax. I'm at Shots getting sandwiches for lunch. Shots Bakery is basically a Highway 395 institution, with the main one being in Bishop. This one's just as good though, and it's a great place to get a sandwich. Be sure to get the sheep herder bread though. Don't tell my family that they gave me a free cookie too. It's the dad tax. So I gotta get gas, and this is the cheapest in town. 7.09. That's insane. Babies are napping and the grandparents are watching them, so we're getting a coffee. One of Amy's favorite things in life is a good cup of coffee and she has her favorite spots all around the places we travel. It's a pretty expensive cup of coffee, but it's pretty hard to beat as well. We always come whenever we're in Mammoth. Cheers to getting coffee without children. The best kind of coffee. <laughs> After naps were over, we decided to go out on another easy trail and brought Amy's entire family with us. The trailhead was right next to Horseshoe Lakes and there was a lot of parking. Heading out on our second trail of the day, either McLeod, Cleod, not sure. It's a lake that's a half mile away. Jack only wanted to walk the first tenth of a mile, which is why I brought the backpack. I knew he was going to ride. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, now it says McLeod. McLeod. It had an E in the last thing. McLeod Lake. I still have no idea whether this is McLeod or McLeod as I saw signs for both ways, so let me know if you know in the comments. This is a fantastic family-friendly trail as the payoff is just incredible at the end and it's only one mile round trip with about 300 feet of elevation gain. Basically the highlight of this trail so far is that we've seen three dogs. We could see all the dogs on the way up. That would be a good trail. Dog, dog, yeah. Little bit of snow on the trail in late June. Easy to go around though. Like the signs back to McLeod Lake again. I don't know what it's called, but it's right there. When you finally make it to the lake, you can add a mile to the trail if you'd like and go around the entire thing. For us though, we just hung out on the beach, threw rocks in, and enjoyed the beautiful views. I have to say, this is an incredible lake. It might even be better than what we saw this morning. 
It's stunning to see something so beautiful with so little effort. Honestly, this was another place I could have stayed all day. Bye bye. Bye. That was a fun hike. That's probably the best family friendly hike you can do in a mammoth. That was an amazing lake. So fun to hang out. I'm definitely gonna be adding that to my list for like every time I come up here. Right at the end of the trail, I had a hat stealer. <laughs> Took my hat and he won't give it back. We're heading to an early dinner at the Mammoth Brewing Company, one of my favorite spots in town. Mammoth Brewing Company is a great spot in the city as they have good beer and good food, plus they have an awesome outdoor seating area that's perfect for summer days in Mammoth. It sounds weird, but honestly my favorite thing here is the banh mi sandwich. Banh mi. Banh mi's are my favorite. Oh, that's awesome wow. buddy, you got french fry and a hot dog. Hey Sunny, do you want some fries to go with your ketchup? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They also have cornhole outside, making it a great place to get a drink and just hang out for a few hours. After putting the kids down, I went out to take some photos at one of my favorite places, the Twin Falls Overlook. You can park right along the side of the road here, and it's stunning to see the fantastic view of the lakes that stretch out in front of you. It's a great place to go later in the day and to take some pictures, and that was the end of our first day in Mammoth. Day two in Mammoth. There's actually not a lot of stuff to do here with toddlers other than outdoor activities, and we did a lot of those yesterday. So we're gonna keep it easy today, get some donuts this morning, hang out in the village, and then head out in the early afternoon. Sunny, what are we getting right now? I'm happy to say that my children are just as excited about donuts as I am, and we went to Mammoth Coffee Roasting Company to get some. I had never been to this spot before, but it ended up being a great place for coffee and donuts, plus the people there were super nice. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a fun breakfast in town. After breakfast, we decided to head up to Twin Lakes and explore a little bit since we are going to be spending a lot of time in the car this afternoon. It's very windy, but everybody want to get outside for a few minutes, so we're at the lake to hang out. It ended up being incredibly windy, so we didn't last long, but it was still a beautiful area to explore. This is another place I hadn't really spent any time at in Mammoth, and so I'm sure I'll come back here on my next trip. We are heading in to the Mammoth Village to hang out, explore, maybe get a little ice cream. After naps, lunch, and more boring stuff at the house, we headed into the Mammoth Lakes Village for our last stop on the trip. There isn't really a lot for kids to do here, but it's still a fun area to run around and explore. Plus, my kids always seem to like the bear statue that's right in the middle. There is a toy store that has a lot of fun things for kids and it's definitely worth seeing, but like most things in Mammoth, it can be pretty expensive. For our last order of business, we went to Hugs Ice Cream to grab a scoop for all of us to share before starting the long drive home. You gonna get your own scoop? Okay. All right. Mm. <laughs> I don't think you got anything, buddy. That's a good end to our time in a windy day in Mammoth, huh, Jack? And just like that, our time in Mammoth is done. We're gonna head back to Southern California. Thanks for exploring with us. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs>